welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's the first in an occasional series of projects featuring the Raspberry Pi Zero. And to kick off I'm going to use the board to make an automated hamster feeder. Now I want to note from the start that this is very much a PDLP, a proper daft little project, something I just wanted to do. And I'm also aware that there's probably already people in the comments going, no, Chris, you shouldn't be using a Raspberry Pi Zero for that. You should be using an Arduino. You should be using a retired astronaut and an empty milk bottle and a piece of string or whatever it happens to be. But uh, I happen to have chosen to do this project using a Raspberry Pi Zero. So let's go and get started. Right, here we have our hamster who needs to be fed once a day with uh, some of these nuts. There we are, just give him a, a nice portion of a nuts there. And the problem is I'm going away. I'm not going to be taking this poor little soul with me. And if I just leave him a massive pile of nuts like this, if I left him all those nuts, what would happen is he would eat all of them straight away and he'd probably explode. So what we need is a means of delivering a portion of nuts to our hamster on a timed basis. And to achieve this, we're going to be using uh, some of these SG90 servos, which I showed you in a recent video. And we're going to be controlling these with a Raspberry Pi Zero. And just in case you're not in the know, there are three different models of Raspberry Pi Zero, and uh, here they are. And the common characteristics is they've all got a system on a chip with a single core one gigahertz CPU, and they've all got 512 megabytes of RAM. They've all got a micro USB power connector, a second micro USB connector for peripherals. They've got a, an SD card slot, and they've got a mini, not a micro, a mini HDMI socket. So what are the differences? Well, the first Raspberry Pi Zero to come to market was the Raspberry Pi Zero 1.2 over here. I don't think the 1.0, 1.1 ever came to actually be sold. And the 1.2 was fairly quickly followed by the 1.3, which added a camera connector. And these two boards are still sold, and you can buy them for about a five pounds or five dollars. Amazing value for a general purpose computer. But the one thing they don't have is wireless connectivity. Whereas you do get this on the board here, the latest one to be released so far. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero W. And this has got down here a shiny little chip which adds Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And the Raspberry Pi Zero W costs about a £10 or $10. Now, in this video, we could be using any one of these. They would all work, but I'm specifically going to be using one of these, a 1.2. And I'm going to be using this actual 1.2, which I happen to have soldered on a, a GPIO connector. You can see some lovely soldering as I put that on there. And in case you're wondering, this is a board I've used previously in a project. I've taken this from my, my Raspberry Pi Zero Zumo robot, which I made a series of videos about not that long ago. And I'm even going to be fitting this board in a case, and the specific case is going to be this one. This is a Pi Moroni Pibo case for the Pi Zero. We really like these cases, I've used them many times before. But uh, before I fit our uh, Pi Zero in the case, I'm going to put into it our uh, micro SD card, which I've imaged with the latest version of a Raspbian Buster. That will go in there. This will go in the case. I think we'll fit it via the uh, magic of uh, filmmaking. And uh, there we are. So we can now move on to the next stage of this project. Right. What you're probably now thinking is how are we going to control the flow of nuts? And the answer is we're going to use contraptions like this, which I'm going to call pod bays. And this is a little pod bay door. And as you can see, we've got the servo mounted on the top and the doors under there like that, which will uh, freely open. And uh, basically the servo is going to hold this closed and it's going to open it when needed to release a portion of nuts. And uh, if we just go to the uh, Pi Zero's desktop for a second. I've got a bit of code running I showed you in a previous video, which just sets the angle of the server. So we just bring that up on screen as well. I'll put in the server angle of 105 degrees like that. The servo will move. And if I now hold our little uh, pod bay like that, you can see that, imagine it's got some nuts uh, in the top. And if I now put an angle in of zero degrees, it opens up the door and would release some nuts. So that's the basic principle of what we're going to be doing. And you're probably asking, how did I build this? What's it built out of? All those sort of questions. Well, this is built out of a plastic card. 
which is a, a kind of plastic sheet. This is about a two mil thick, this particular sheet. And uh, you can take a knife like our friend Stanley and uh, using appropriate care, you can score plastic hard, give it several scores down the same line. And then if you're lucky, you can then snap it and get a nice clean edge. And that's how I've made the parts for the, the pod bay, just by uh, cutting out and uh, snapping to get the particular parts. And then using a Stanley knife to help me clean up the edges if they need cleaning up. And the result is we end up with some parts like this. These are the five bits needed to make one of the pod bays. And they can be put together using a liquid polyadhesive like uh, this one, which will allow us to make a solvent weld between the different parts. And uh, by the magic of filmmaking, we've almost finished. Our second pod bay is now put together. So all we need to do is to sellotape on the pod bay door and to fix on the servo using a bit of double-sided tape. And then after a bit more cutting, we can put everything together. So we've got two pod bays suspended in the air in an appropriate configuration. And we can now move on to connect this contraption up to our Raspberry Pi Zero. Right, I've now got everything connected up. As you can see, the servos are wired in to the Raspberry Pi Zero. And I do want to point out I'm aware that this configuration is not ideal for working as a pet feeder with a real animal. You wouldn't actually have your Pi Zero down where the animal was. You'd have to have some little shoots to direct the nuts that are going to fall out of here. But this is okay for our sort of test purposes. And uh, to show you the wiring diagram, we've got pins 11 and 12 controlling our servos with their signal wire going to those pins. And the servos are also taking power from the Raspberry Pi Zero, connected to uh, pin 6 and uh, 9 for the ground rail, and to pin to 2 and 4, which supply 5 volts before it's gone to the Pi's voltage regulator. And it's worth pointing out you might want to power servos in many projects more like this, using a separate battery power for the servo. But uh, here, the servos are only being turned on for a very small amount of time, just when they open or close. So I think we'll get away with things just fine, being powered from the Pi's main adapter. I've also got plugged into the Pi Zero a USB hub. Here it is, we'll just pull that in there. This is taking my mouse and keyboard. This is a particularly useful little hub because it actually plugs directly into a micro USB connector. Uh, whether you'll need something like this will depend exactly what you're connecting to your Raspberry Pi Zero. You might have, for example, a combined keyboard mouse combination. So you can just use a, an adapter like this to go from the micro USB to USB type A. And if you were using a, a Raspberry Pi Zero W in this project, you could be using a Bluetooth keyboard. But for me right now, this is how I've got things set up and uh, configured. So let's move on to look at some Python code. Right, having sorted out the hardware side of things, let's now turn to the software. And so here we are on the Raspberry Pi Zero's desktop, and we're using Thonny to write our Python code. So what's going on here? Well, the first three lines import libraries. After that, we've got a line that sets the numbering mode for our GPIO pins to, to board numbering. And after that, four lines of code, which set up pins 11 and 12 as outputs, and define them as servo 1 and servo 2, which are going to be using PWM or pulse width modulation to control the angle of the servos. And then after that, we start both of the servos off, but with a value of zero there, so the pulse of the servos isn't actually turned on. And if you want to know more about what all this means in terms of servo control, I did a recent video called Raspberry Pi Servo Motor Control. After that, we've got a section which is all about physically loading nuts into our hamster feeder. So what this does is it starts off with an input, and the input is simply a dummy variable, which just allows us to print on the screen, close pod bay door one, and press enter. So this gives us a pause where the user can physically close the pod bay door. And after that, we will move the servo to 105 degrees, which is a duty cycle value of 7.83. We'll then wait for a half a second just to allow the servo to move, and then we'll turn the servo off. So it's not actually going to be at tension, it's not going to be using power to hold the pod bay door closed, because it could be there a very long time. So we're just going to use the friction of the gearing in the servo to hold the door shut. And what we're also going to do there is to set a variable called pod one to a value of one, which will indicate to us later in the code that the door is closed. We then have to do all this again for the second uh, pod bay, same thing, getting the user to close the door and press enter, etc. 
And after all that, it'll say on the end here, load the pod base, put the nuts in, and it tells us the nuts will be released as programmed. After this, we've now got inside the try finally configuration, a setup to go through a loop to actually release the nuts according to a particular time and date. And I'm sure some of you will say we should be getting the user to enter variables for this, but here I've hard-coded the values into the code. You could split them out if you wanted to. And because this is running inside a try finally configuration, if you happen to break into this code using control C, it'll always execute that bit of code on the end to stop the servos, clean up the GPIO pins, etc. But let's go back up to uh, where this code starts, which is there. And basically, what it says here is that while the value pod 2 is 1, in other words, whilst the pod bay door 2 is still closed, we'll keep executing this loop. So what this does is to basically get the current date and time from date time, and then it's got two if statements here to compare that date and time to two times we've set, and to open the pod bay doors if required. So in the first instance here, if we look to where we are, that's the if statement. It says if the month is 2 for February, the date is the 5th, 5th of February, the hour is 10, and minutes is 30. The hamster will have his breakfast at 10.30 in the morning. And pod 1 is 1, the door is still closed on pod bay 1. It'll get on with the stuff below here, which is to print it's going to open the pod bay door, uh, change the duty cycle on the servo to uh, 2, which is 0 degrees, open the servo in other words, wait for 0.5 seconds to allow the servo to move, and then turn off the servo, set pod 1 to 0 because the door is now open, and it's also going to stop the servo because it might be sitting there doing nothing a very long time. We then got a similar section which checks for the same things but for the second pod bay, which here is set to be a day later, February the 6th rather than the 5th to be opened. And then at the end of this loop, we've got this code here, which is quite important because it slows down the loop to stop the Pi operating at a very high level of CPU activity. And then finally on the end, we've got the code to uh, stop the servos to clean up our GPIO pins. This will execute at the end. You might be thinking, well, why am I stopping the servos here when I've stopped them already? But of course, we might break out of the code using Control c and finally make sure we stop the servos, clean up the GPIO pins if we happen to be in that situation. So there we are. That's our code. And I think it's now time to see if all this works. Greetings. Here I am back again with the hamster because we're both very excited to see if this contraption is going to work. So let's go to the desktop where as you can see I put up a large digital clock and uh, in the code I've set the day to release with the 4th of February which is today and the time to be uh, 1933 and 1935. Just a couple of minutes from now. So uh, let's execute the code. And it's now telling us to close pod bay door one, which we'll do like uh, this and press enter. There we are. And it's now saying to close the second door, which we'll do again and also press uh, enter. There we are, the doors are shut. And it's now saying we must put in the, the nuts and wait for release. So let's put in some nuts. There we are, those are in there. Those are in here, there's a lot in that one, isn't there? Hamster's getting uh, very excited over there. And uh, now we have to wait for the time of release. And we must be getting very close now. It's getting very exciting. I'm excited, the hamster's excited. What's about that? It worked. Look, the hamster can go and eat all the nuts. Isn't that amazing? We proved we can dispense nuts to a hamster using a, a Raspberry Pi Zero. Good little Raspberry Pi Zero, you did very well indeed. So we just now wait a couple more minutes. And once again, things must be about to happen. Yes, the hamster didn't flinch today as all those nuts came out, he can start eating the things up. So uh, there we are, this has been a successful experiment. A proper daft little project, as I said at the start, but a great example of automating something using a Raspberry Pi Zero. Hopefully, this video has given you some ideas for how a Raspberry Pi Zero can be used, not just to help feed pets, but more broadly in automation. In my next 
Raspberry Pi Zero Projects video, I'm going to be using the board to make a wireless network camera. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hope to talk to you again very soon. Thank you.